what's up what's up what's up my fellow creators welcome guys thank you for joining me for a moment in becky's house of cards please like this video share this video subscribe to my channel down below so you always know when the next video does go live make sure you do check out my channel for more content more pick a card readings more zodiac readings positivity and so much more i've got some works uh i know i've been saying this for a while but i actually am uploading new videos things that are besides just positivity so check that out guys it's all about having fun and being your true self and authentic and yeah living your best dream so today uh pick today's pick a card reading is star-crossed lovers but with a question mark like so i bring this up is is this person my star-crossed lover is this person my soulmate because sometimes i think we get so bent on having this person that we think that it is that we may be missing an opportunity to call in somebody who actually is for us so this is just going to kind of be that confirmation are they or aren't they and just a trigger alert right now i'm going to bring this up this is a trigger warning because my readings are more about the healing side of things and with this direct question there may be some information that comes through that is not going to make you extremely happy or excited about it so I'm just bringing that up here in the beginning that this is a trigger warning I will mention that at the beginning of every reading as well just in case some of you guys do skip the shuffle I know it goes both ways and that's why I do put that information in the description box down below whether you want to go through the shuffle or not I understand so without further ado let's get into it I do have a second deck over here for some clarifying cards if we need them along the way and also a couple of oracle cards I won't be drawing as many uh, from as many oracle decks as I normally do but I will be drawing probably just as many oracle cards okay so, Soros, what messages do you have for the collective? Pick a card, one, two, and three in regards to, is this person their star-crossed lover? Is this their soulmate? Uh, I know we don't usually ask yes or no questions, but give me as much information and being as concise as possible in regards to this star-crossed lovers. What messages do you have to bring through for the collective? Pick a card, one, two, and three in regards to star-crossed lovers. What messages do you have, Source, in regards to star-crossed lovers for the collective? Pick a card. Star-crossed lovers. Is this their star-crossed lover? Is this their, their true soulmate? Is this a person they're meant to be with? The star-crossed lovers. Piles 1, 2, and 3. What do they need to know, Source? What messages can we give to them? All right, for pile number one, star cross lovers. Wow, so you guys had a few cards fly out. Okay, and I'm hearing they want four cards this time around, so I'm going to go with it. And pile number two, okay. Thank you, Source. For pile number three, is this their star cross lover? What do they need to know, pile number three? What messages do you have? Okay, thank you. And for pile number one, what else do they need to know in regards to their star cross lover? Is this their star cross lover? Okay, guys, are, cards are flying out today. That's always good. Pile number two, star cross lovers. Thank you, source. And pile number three, star cross lovers. All right, thank you. Pile number one, star-crossed lovers. What else do they need to know, Source? What other messages do you have for them? Thank you. What other messages do you have for pile number two? Star-crossed lovers, Source. Okay. Whoa. So that card went all the way over there. And pile number three. What other messages do you have for pile number three in regards to star-crossed lovers? Thank you, Source. Okay. Messages for pile number two in regards to star cross lovers. Okay. All right. There's going to be some heavy messages coming through. I can already feel it. And pile number three. Okay. They want this, this one. Actually, they're telling me to take these two. They're trying to come out together. So I'm going to take them. So pile three, you're the one that got five cards. I don't usually do five card pulls, but we're just going to go with it today. Sources kind of got messages coming through. So 
And if you guys are interested about what it is I think about love, because I don't like doing these very often, make sure you check out my channel. I did post a video in regards to that. Okay, <laughs> so let me put this here. It's not that I don't like love. I do. I just have my own beliefs on it. Okay, so today I'm actually going to have you guys choose from gemstones. So from pile number one, I'm putting this clear quartz on. Pile number two, this lapis lazuli. And pile number three, we've got this amethyst. So take a moment. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and choose which gemstone you are drawn to. And without further ado, I'm going to move these off to the side. And I'm going to get into it with pile number one. So for those of you that chose this crystal quartz. And I will bring up a little bit about this in the reading too. So star-crossed lovers. Let's see what we got going on here, okay? So the queen of swords in reverse with the star in the upright. All right the four of swords in the upright and last but not least okay the pulpus in the upright so you guys are not in communication right now and if you are it's very like kind of like goes back and forth like i i want to say it's bickering okay for no re for no reason like it's almost like each one of you guys has something to say and you say it and then you stop talking to each other and for others of you guys there is no communication right now uh this is very much like i feel like you're both very hopeful in the situation um one of you guys does not want to communicate to the other they don't want to communicate that they're hopeful about this that they're wishing and praying upon a star about this right like this could be you however i am getting that this might be the other person i do get this energy that this is you over here but this they don't want to speak about it because there's a lot of fear that is going into this and if they do talk to you like they keep it very casual because they're protecting themselves right now and so it's not that you guys are not we'll get into that in a minute Okay, so you guys care about each other a lot. However, there's this energy from you that you feel very trapped when it comes to this connection. Uh, there might be a lot of peer pressure coming into this as well. So maybe you've told some friends or some family members and they're always on your back about it. They're always on your back about when are you going to hear from this person? When are you going to move forward with this person? Are you sure this is the person for you? Are you really sure that this is going to happen for you? Like, what's going on here? And you're really kind of annoyed by it. And you're, you're, you intuitively know that they don't have a right to ask. Like, this is the interesting thing. You intuitively know that they don't have a right to ask, but you keep letting them ask anyways. And you feel tied to this situation you feel tied by this situation and what you're not seeing is this person is very much keeping an eye on you all the time okay they could be an aquarius heavy libra energy coming through could also very well be pisces or cancer does not have to be okay does not have to be but that's the energies that are coming through this could be energy that it you both embody okay because we move fluidly through time and space, and we embody all different types of energies at one point in time. Uh, there's times when there's a lot of positivity in regards to this connection. Uh, I feel like you guys definitely have a spiritual connection. I feel like you guys communicate in the 5D or the 4D, the ether. And I feel like you guys feel each other. Like when one of you is thinking about the other one, it's because the the other one was thinking of you first, if that makes sense. Like it, it's like you guys, if you think of them, it's cause they were thinking of you. And it's like, if they think of you, it's cause you were thinking of them and you guys feel that energy. It's almost like an ebb and flow for you guys. And there's just this lack of communication with this, com with this connection, right? There's this lack. The only thing that I have here is there's no 
opposing energies here. There's a lot of feminine energy coming in, which is telling me that there is an imbalance within the masculine. Uh, but that's telling me that there's also an imbalance in the feminine as well. Okay, so whichever energy you embody, whether you're man or woman, it does not matter. It just means that one of you is putting forth too much of the other. So if one of you is chasing, the other one is running, and I'm sure everybody knows about this. What that means is that you're just relying on that needy, necessity type energy too much. And the other one is getting frightened because of it. And that's why they don't want to communicate what they feel about this connection. And there's a lot of energy here that is fear. Okay? On both parts. On both parts. So there's a fear for you that they're not ever going to come to you. And there's a fear for them that like, oh my gosh, I have to surrender to this situation. And so both of you are very much in a state of resistance here because you feel tied by the surroundings that you have, right? Maybe it's for you, pile one, and your work and your life and your home situation. For them, it's very much like their friends and the people that they're surrounded by, right? So you guys are very much mirroring each other in a way. And there's this interesting situation where it's like sources trying to lead this forward, but with so much resistance, source cannot control your free will, right? They cannot control this other person's free will. And at the end of the day, it's interesting that this is a star-crossed lover's read and you get the star. Like right off the bat, you get the star. It's just interesting. Well, I have a pile that just moved here. Okay. And it's just funny to me because it's almost like source is saying like yeah you guys have a connection that's as deep as the stars as old as time itself okay and 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 there's this interesting backlash coming from that as well it's almost like everybody around you guys is aware of it and they don't want some people say something and other people don't and others try hard to sabotage it are you guys soulmates? Yes. Can I say more than that? No, because I think that we meet a lot of soulmates in our lives. But again, there's no opposing energy here. I know I haven't turned over this other card yet, but there's no masculine energy coming out. This is so much feminine energy coming in. You know, we have air sign, which is masculine by trait, but stability. We have a need for stability within our own energies. Okay. And this person sees something in you that they don't think that they can ever look for in themselves. And what they're missing is that you are, what they find so alluring about you is what they themselves have. And I feel like that's why you run towards them. And I feel like you're the one that instigates the communication. And sometimes they run from it. Sometimes they answer you. So this is sourcing that it's okay for you guys to be soulmates. It's okay for you guys to want this connection. But there's still a need for you to work on selves. Because we are rising up into a higher consciousness. Which means we're trying to come up out of this dependent love. So for you, you need to cancel being the one that's always like constantly communicating with them. And that way then this person can understand what it is to not have your energy at their beck and call. Right? Because you do give to them. You do give to them a lot. And they are used to that. They're so used to that. And they don't know, you know, what to do if you were to leave. Look. Yeah, so we have the Nine of Swords in the reverse. And the Four of Pentacles in the reverse on the bottom. So this person's afraid of money. Okay, this person's afraid of the financial stability that they're bringing. And maybe you too. Maybe you're in this energy of feeling, you know, financially burdened. And there's a lack of, of trying. There's a real lack of trying here. You guys are both stuck in your heads. Like, there's a lot of air coming through. And so I think that what Source is really trying to point out to you, Pile 1, Okay, this person's very afraid of taking a risk with you because they've been so hurt in the past and they want to really protect themselves. But the problem is, is that 
so I'm getting this energy that Source wants me to point out, and I'm trying to really figure out how to tell you this. There's no sense of surrender in this connection. So you're in your mind constantly, like, if you weren't, you wouldn't be on this reading. Okay, you're, you're, this person's constantly on your mind. This, you're constantly thinking about this person. You're constantly trying to play out scenarios with this person in your mind. Like, oh my gosh, when we get together, it's going to be like this. And it's going to have this. And we're going to be like this. And we're going to be the talk of the town. And everybody's going to be jealous. And everybody's going to have... Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of you playing a story in your head. And Source is trying to tell you, like, that... You're not paying attention. This is like lack of focus and lack of focus on self and inattention to specific details. So there's something that you need to pay attention to in regards to this person and the way that they communicate with you and the way that they bring up situations with you so that you can heal a real true imbalance within yourself. Okay, so there's this saying, it's not a matter of right now whether or not you need to know that you guys are star-crossed lovers, and I understand that that was the question that I presented, presented at the beginning, but there's something deeper here. There's something deeper. There is a connection. There's a real, real intricate connection here. However, this connection cannot move forward. The more that you stay, like the the longer you stay stuck in this mindset of like, let me play out scenarios and then let me try to control that. So there's like a sense of control here. There's a sense of, there's a sense of you trying to really guide this along the way that you want it to. And so there's no allowance of letting source, let this happen naturally because there's a fear there's a fear that runs deep. Like, I, this is like in the pit of my stomach fear. What if they never come to me? Okay, and Source is trying to tell you to calm down. It's okay. I got this. But if you don't trust in divine timing, then you're always going to be in this energy of trying to control it. And Source really wants you to see that you are this pope -S energy and it's time for you to step up and use your intuition and begin seeing beyond the veil. And that's not in regards to this person. That's in regards to your own life, Pile One. You need to really see beyond the veil. Because you're so concerned about this connection right now. And you don't see that your tying energy here is an inattention to detail. Right? The Nine of Swords in the Upright in my deck is so beautiful because it's talking about success no matter the cost, no matter what I have to sacrifice, no matter what I have to do, no matter what I have to cut through, I'm going to succeed. Winning at all costs, right? But when it's in the reverse, it's this energy of like, I'm impatient. I can't do what I need to do. I need it to go the way that I need it to because I need to be validated. And you're, you're, you're missing that you're the one that has to validate you. Being with this person is not going to bring you validation. Okay, and I forgot that I was going to say this at the beginning of the reading, but I'm saying trigger alert here because a lot of people don't like to hear this stuff. They just want to know, when are we going to fall in love? When are we going to get together? And then when you get that information, what happens? You sit back and you wait until that date or you wait until that month. And then when nothing happens, then you go to a new reading. You're like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to a new reading of a place, time, and date. And when you get that, you sit back and wait. Okay, waiting is a sense of resistance. No matter how you look at it, because you think that you can sit back and do nothing and this is going to fall into your lap. And Source is telling you it's time for you to stop this communication back and forth like what you have. You need to walk away for now so that you can focus on yourself and focus on your energy, this beautiful energy that you have within you and come to a place of being okay and trusting the process because there's no sense of stability. And with there's no sense of stability, there's this energy of like, well, I'm like, again, with this nine of swords, I'm getting this. I'm going to control it. I'm going to make it the way that I need it to be because I have to have it this way. Like, like this energy is it's consuming. So, yes, you guys are soulmates. Well, can I say that you're going to be together 
honestly pile one. I don't think that anybody can say that, yes, this is the person that you're meant to end up with. Reason being is because free will, and I'm just going to be blunt, blunt with you guys, free will is a bitch. No one can control someone else's will. And so is there a potential that you two will end up together? Yes, of course there is. Of course there is. But if you're just sitting back and waiting for this person to show up and knock on your door and say, okay, let's, let's have a relationship. Like it's not, I'm just going to tell you, it's not going to happen. Things don't happen that way. Okay. This is not the notebook. This is not freaking Nicholas Sparks books. This is not that energy. Like that's not what real life is. You have to go out of your way and you have to heal yourself. You have to learn how to resonate with yourself. You have to learn how to control the vibration within yourself instead of hoping and praying that this is going to fall into your lap because that's just putting yourself in a very unfair situation. That's why oftentimes when I do these, like I don't do a lot of love readings. Why? Because a lot of people, they don't want to hear this. They just want to know when the next situation is going to come to fruition. And I can, I can appreciate that. I can absolutely appreciate that, but the problem is, is that we're on the spiritual journey, and being on the spiritual journey, Pile One, it means that we have work to do on ourselves. Like, Source isn't going to be like, oh, here you go, Pile One, you didn't do anything, so you deserve this. Like, like Source has to meet you halfway. That's what manifestation is, okay? That's what manifestation is, and it's interesting that you chose this particular gemstone because this gemstone is connected to your crown chakra. The Pope S is also connected with your intuition crown chakra, right? This is about being able to listen to the divine. What did I say? You need to open yourself up so that you can see beyond the veil. There's a sense of codependency coming through from your energy, which is also turning into codependency of this person's energy. That's why when you run to them and you give them that conversation or you give them that, that you know, whatever it is, you instigate some sort of connection with them to try and bring them closer to you. That is codependency. You shouldn't have to feel like you need to control it. You should just be able to let it play out. Even if that means, Pile One, you need to be single for a while so that you can start to control and balance your own inner energies. This is a lot of feminine energy coming in for a love reading. Like, usually I'll get one of each, but there is no masculine coming out here. This is feminine. And so, and then for the masculine's feminine to be in the reverse, that should tell you that he's not in touch with his feminine side or she's not in touch with her feminine side because she's so used to running. He's so used to running. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, they don't know how to connect with that aspect. And if you're taking on all that energy that's not balanced that's not balanced at all we have to come into alignment with both our masculine and our feminine energies in order for us to call in the love that we desire okay and so there's something that you're missing here you're not paying attention to what source is trying to tell you in regards to this connection and that's not something that i can come through and be like oh it's this oh it's this because the truth of the matter is, is that there are many people who are watching this. And for all the people that are watching this, you guys are all experiencing something different and you're at a different place in the timeline. Okay. Like that's it. Look, stability on the bottom of that stability, right? We have a lack of stability here. There is no stability. And so source is trying to bring you into a place of stability. How do you do that? By you finding balance within excuse me <laughs> excuse me my apologies right eight eight is a powerful number for you and i don't think that you quite yet realize it my apologies for blocking the camera i'm trying to make this focus a little better okay but you have to come into a space of connecting with your higher self with source with your guides and not being so concerned about having this relationship, this connection, because there's so much that's being missed. I feel like Source is constantly giving you signs. I feel like your angels are constantly coming in to try and help guide you to where you need to be. And yet, Pile One, you're so obsessed with the love that I need in my life that I can't pay attention to that because I'm only going to pay attention to it when it has to do with the love or I'm going to make it fit the way that I want it to fit so that it makes me feel better. 
You know, I'm not here. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. Okay. So we have Yoko Ono coming out first. It says yes is always the answer. Love is performance art that takes place among the clouds. Love is not a dream. You can remember it if you want to. Yeah, I, I think this is a beautiful statement here. Yes is always the answer. So source is telling you like whatever you want. Yes, I will give that to you. But understanding that it might not come in the package, the place, or the thing that you expect it to. Because I know what's best for you. And that's where we have such a hard time as humans is surrendering to something that we don't see. A creation that we don't understand. Right? Because in the scheme of things, there's only so little that we could ever truly understand about creation because we're not source. We're not living in the ether right now we're living in this 3d realm from a human mind point mind stance and that's not it's it's hard it's just hard and it says love is performance art that takes place among the clouds so we're saying i've created a love for you i need you to meet me halfway i need you to do the work on you and i need you to let go of love for right now okay this person is a connection to you it's a beautiful connection it's as a tale as old as time is coming through right now, okay? But can you live with faith, knowing that it will come when it needs to come, and there's nothing that you can do to control that? Can you live with that? Can you be okay with that? It says, love is not a dream. You can remember it if you want to. Love is not codependency. Okay, like I said, this is not the notebook kind of sh life. We we don't have love like that. That's not real love. In fact, if any of you have watched any of my videos for any amount of time, everybody knows that when I see the notebook, I see codependency at its finest, and yet everybody thinks that's so romantic, and it's really not. Love is not a struggle like that. Love is something that's peaceful. It's kind. It's gentle. It's something that most humans are not familiar with because it goes against everything that we in this now modern day and age have ever been taught. And it's hard to convince people otherwise. We have Joan of Arc coming out. Power. Look, more feminine figures. This deck has both masculine and feminine, but we've even got Marilyn Monroe on the bottom of the deck. Okay, like this has both masculine and feminine, and there's so many feminines coming through right now. Your masculine's imbalanced because you're imbalanced. Your feminine's unbalanced because you're un unbalanced. Okay, you see what I'm seeing? It doesn't matter where you're at. There's just a lot of feminine energy that's coming through here. Showing me that you need to reconnect. You need to reconnect with the feminine side and also the masculine side as well. It says, only settle for eternity. Love and faith will defeat violence. Be not afraid of fire and arrows or anything that may come. Do you see this? Like, only settle for eternity. Even if it doesn't happen the way that you plan it to, you're an eternal spirit. That's it. This journey is about you. It's about you finding you. Not you finding love. It's about you finding you and falling in love with you, Pile One. Love and faith will defeat violence. What did I say? Can you trust the process and have faith that it's all going to work out the way that it's meant to? Not the way that you think it needs to, but the way that it's meant to. That's what surrender is. It's surrendering to your faith that the divine has got your back no matter what, even if it doesn't show up in the package that you think it should. Be not afraid of fire and arrows or anything that may come. Like There's already a lot of drama in this connection. Regardless if it's showing here or not, I get the sense, and that's why I was saying when you guys do connect, it's very, like, it's just not good. Like, they don't want to tell you about how they feel. You want them to tell you about how you feel. So you go into a manipulation of trying to make them tell you about how they feel, and then they respond with resistance, and that makes you upset. And it, it's just like, again, this inattention to detail because you're thinking it's all about this love. And that's okay. So many of us on this journey, that's how we start. We needed somebody to kind of give us the push. Like, oh, they're, they're the reason I'm on this journey. And then at the end, you finally realize, oh, it's never been about them. It's always been about me. It's always been about me. Look, happiness. 42. 
Happiness is not because somebody comes into your life, pile one. Happiness is cultivated from within. Right? You're on the journey to happiness, but look, they want it over this because it's saying when you let this go and you surrender this to source, right? What's that saying? Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Then you're going to come into a state of peace. And that's what happiness is. Happiness is not because I have something that I thought that I needed or wanted. Happiness is something that you cultivate each and every day. When you wake up, you can choose to be happy or you can choose to be miserable. Like you can choose to be happy about the information you're getting from this reading or you can choose to be mad and triggered and click off. Do you see? Like it's what you choose. You can choose to listen to the messages the source has for you or you can go find someone else that's going to tell you what you want to hear because it exists and if you don't think that it doesn't, well, you know, guys, it's like I've been doing this for long enough to know. There are people who only go by what the meanings of the cards are. They don't go by what they're feeling. They're trying to tell you they're going by what they're feeling, but they just want the views and the likes. And so they're going to tell you what you want to hear because they want you to keep coming back, hearing what you want to hear, feeding the ego. If you can't take the truth, don't come to the place where the truth is going to be spoke. Okay, Source wants what's best for you, but if you're going to constantly resist Source and saying, well, I have to hear what I want to hear, otherwise I'm not down with it. Happiness is cultivated from within. It is not because of this situation. It is not because of this situation. This went a lot longer than I was planning on it because there's so much coming through. Like, you guys have a lot. There's like this lack of... of, of real truth coming through because it's so surface level and so it's like this person's afraid to get involved with you and that's all you can think about pile one and so instead of walking away all you're thinking about is what can i do on my journey to ensure this person is going to come to me and that's not what this is about it's like you need to start asking yourself what can i do for myself so that i know my own worth in this journey so that I can come into a place of peace and happiness within my own soul. So that I can allow myself to blossom into the soul spirit that I'm meant to be. You know, we come from a society where we're so codependent. And, and to let go of codependency is probably the number one hardest thing. Like, I think that that is probably the one thing that takes the longest for most people on this journey. And Source is telling you, yes, you guys are connected. You guys are star-crossed lovers in a way, having the star come out, yes. But you're not going to get your star-crossed lover if you just continue to wonder when this is going to happen rather than focusing on what do I need to do so that I can bring myself into balance, right? You need to bring yourself into a place of inner stability and not that I have to have this person because if I don't have this person, that means that something's wrong with me. The way that this person is treating you is not a reflection in regards to you. What it is, is they're mirroring back to you something that you need to heal within yourself. That's why it's so scary. That's why it's so frightening. That's why there's so much energy coming through on this pile. And Source is asking you to reconnect with Source. There's a plan in the works, but if you're trying to control it, you're not ever going to let that plan play out because you're going to be too worried about whether or not you're going to get what you want, right? Source knows what you want better than you do. And I think sometimes that's hard for us as humans to, to, to understand because we're like, but we know what we want, but do we? But do we? Like, you're on a good path, pile one. You're on a good path. This person may or may not be there with you. Are you star-crossed lovers? Yes, you guys have a love, a tale as old as time. But that doesn't mean that this is the grand love that you're going to have in this life. Because maybe a tale as old as time was a time of constant bickering and fighting to help you both grow into the individuals that you're meant to be. And this is the time now for you to figure out what is it that you need. You're so much stronger and braver than you realize you are. So this is, I'm giving you love. I'm giving you light. I'm giving you hope. And if you made it to this point in the reading, God bless you. <laughs> Let me just say, God bless you. You are willing to hear the truth and you're willing to go a little bit deeper than this to understanding what is real love and real love comes from self. 
from self and that's hard and that's why these love readings are hard for me because this is something I have learned over so much time. I truly appreciate your time pile one. Thank you for joining me for a moment in Becky's House of Cards. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, set that notification bell down below so you always know when the next video does go live. Until next time, go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. Becky's out of the house for now until we meet again. Mwah. Peace out. I love y'all. Bye. All right, pile number two. So for those of you that chose this lapis lazuli, all right, let's see what's up here. Star-crossed lovers. Okay, we've got the Pope in the reverse coming out first. The King of Wands in the upright. The Three of Wands in the reverse. And the Three of Cups. So, like, pile one, you guys are the opposite. That's so weird. There's a lot of masculine energy coming in, but no feminine. A lack of commitment. Okay. And there's a need to deal with parental neglect in one or both of your lives. Okay, there's like this need to really deal with it. It's like somebody's coming across as this king of wands, but it's only a rouge. Like it, this is not, this is not a, a reality, right? This is not a reality. This is, this is just a play on ego. This is a mask somebody's wearing. Are you star-crossed lovers? There's too much masculine energy here to say that you guys are a perfect pair for one another. So I'm going to say this before we get too far in because I said I was going to say this at the beginning of every reading. Trigger alert. Okay, because my, my readings differ from others. I'm not here to tell you when this person's coming in or whatever. This is the messages from Source I'm on you believing that you guys are meant to be together and what messages they have to bring in. So Source wants to point out there is a huge lack of commitment to this connection. A huge lack. Whether that's on your side or their side, it does not matter. Okay? And both of you guys are falling in your masculine energy. They're falling in their masculine energy, but it's reversed. You're falling in your masculine energy, but it's also reversed. And there's this energy of wearing a mask. So I feel like you may think that somebody's kingly or queenly. But there's this energy of like they're they're really playing the game. They're really playing the game. They're only playing the game because they're jealous. And they're they're playing the game because they don't want you to have somebody else, but they don't want to have you. Okay, and there's this energy of like, oh, this is such a weird energy. Trickery. There's a lot of trickery coming in. There's a lot of it's like warning against people who are playing this this person, playing you on the side. Like, So I feel like this person is playing you. And I don't feel like you guys are as close as you thought you were. Like this person is really smooth with words. You know, when I look at this king of, king of swords here, when I see this king of wands here, I'm always thinking of somebody who's very passionate in the way they approach somebody and knows exactly what to say to get what they want. Now, with the King of, of Swords, we're talking about a smooth, smooth operator, right? But this person is more than that. Like, this person knows how to play on the core of your being, okay? This person knows how to play on the core of your being. And they are, like, trying to really defend and hide how they feel under the surface, and they don't want to change. They don't want to change. But I feel like they have told you that they're trying to change. Or they've done things to try to make you believe that they've changed. And the source is telling you that they haven't. Like this person will double cross you as soon as they get you back into their into their lives. Because they don't know how to love. Because there was a lack of love in growing up. And they're not working on that. Like they're not working on the healing aspect of it. So are you guys star-crossed lovers? There's a lot of misleading information here. This is a very toxic relationship. This is very toxic. Okay, uh, does that mean you guys are going to end up together, not going to end up together? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not here to tell you yes or no to that. What I'm here to tell you is what is up with this star-crossed lover. Like, are you guys star-crossed lovers? Yes, I feel like you've spent many, many, many lifetimes together. 
Like, I get that energy. You've spent a lot of lifetimes together, but they've all been very similar. Very similar. Like, this person's been disconnected. If this person wasn't disconnected, then you were disconnected. And now it has come into a culmination of one of you guys may be healing, but you're, you're not healing necessarily the right reasons. And because of that, you're not able to heal the right things. Like, it's like you're only going to heal the things that are keeping you from love rather than healing yourself as a whole. And you don't see yourself as a whole person anyways. You see yourself only complete being with this person. And that's the trickery that Source is trying to warn against here. Like, this is this is very intriguing information coming through. There's very much... This person knows how to play your heart. This person knows how to play your loins okay like they may try to sleep with you any chance they get and then they always tell you to sleep with you that they're going to they're oh i've changed so much i've changed so much you know like you don't know what it is that i've done in my life like i've done this and i've done that and then as soon as they get what they want they leave and they break your heart and then they come back it seems like this is just an ongoing thing like i hear it's a flip of the coin you're like the backup a booty call. Oof. Pile two. Pile two. This is this is heavy. This is heavy, heavy energy. Um, this has been put in place to teach you something. Uh, not only boundaries, but to trust yourself. Like not to trust another person before you trust yourself. And I feel like you trust this person before you trust yourself. Like you, and you don't even trust yourself to make the right decision. Like it's almost like I feel like you've tried to walk away. I feel like you've tried to walk away, but you don't know how. I don't know why I feel like I need to get another card here. But I feel like you've tried to walk away and you just don't know how. Like you don't know, like you don't trust yourself to walk away because you're like, well, as soon as they come back in, I'm going to be doing something again with them. And there's this energy of, like, you're lying to yourself, okay? You're lying to yourself. Whoa. And because you're lying to yourself, there's, like, this sense of not being able to c cut this connection, cut the ties, cut the ties. Somebody's being very overbearing here. Look at that. Look at that. What did I say? This person does not want to change. Thank you, Source. I love when you play the part. Just, I love that. I can't, I can't right now. This person has no sense of self-stability, self right? When this death card comes out in the reverse, it's saying they don't want to let go of the past. Like, they keep playing the past over and over again. For this to be a connecting energy with these two here. It's like Source is trying to say, you need to cut this out and change. You need to come up into this beautiful, strong energy. But Pile 2, this person doesn't want to. They just blatantly don't want to. They're just rather go through the heartache, the pain, being in this black abyss, being in the oblivion, and pretend that they're this king of swords energy and they're not. Okay, you could be dealing with a Scorpio, Sagittarius, an Aries, a Cancer, or a Taurus. does not have to be. But Source came out saying, look, didn't I say this person doesn't want to change? And that's this, this death card coming out in reverse, the no-name card in my deck. Coming out in reverse saying they're refusing a transformation here. They're not wanting to transform for you, for anybody. It's like, and no matter what they tell you, like, that's it. Like, this is very narcissistic in energy coming through. This is very, like unruly energy coming through like this person like stepping on you this person likes what they get from you this person likes the way that it makes you hurt and it's not that there's some sick sadist or anything like that it's just that that's because that's what this person believes is love this person really believes that this is how you treat people you care about look at that we have the two pentacles in the reverse so they juggle you with other people. Like, what did I say? I feel like you're the booty call. Like they only call you when they can't get something else, pile two. You're so much better than this. This person is tricking the shit out of you. They're really good. They know how to get you every time. 
And I feel like you're coming through to being defensive. Like, I feel like right now you're probably really upset about what it is that I'm telling you. And I'm so sorry that I have to be the one to say this. Okay, like, I, I, there, there is a sense of disconnect. This person took care of their family when they were kids. This person was the dumping post for their family as a child. This person was constantly trying to gain approval. Like, they're very neurotic in their way that they approve, like, get their approval for themselves to make themselves feel better. But it's like heroin. They get the hit. They're on the high, and then boom, they get off the high, and they're back in this energy of like, who can I convince to bring me what I need? Okay, this person is addicted to this energy, and this person isn't going to change for you, and nothing that you do will make them change. You know, five is coming out very strong here. Four, lack of stability. There is no stability. There's no, they don't feel protected in life. They feel like this is how they have to protect themselves in life. For you, your angels have been trying to communicate with you for a while, but I feel like for you, and please, pile two, like I said, this is a trigger alert. So if you're willing to hang in there with me, you may be able to find some clarity of yourself, okay? Okay. And I, I amend you for sticking it out with me if you do. That's bravery. That's bravery because I'm not like other tarot readers, okay? I'm just not. So the thing is, is that <sighs> you're so focused on this has to be my manifested future. This has to be. You're not seeing that you, in trying to control this connection or trying to get with this person or trying to make them change, like, why do I get this sense of, like, you're with them because you know you can make them change? Pile two. There is nothing, nothing that you can do to assure this person how deep your love is. There is nothing that you can do for this person to convince them that you love them more than anybody else. There is nothing that you can do for this person to change what they are. Change has to come from them. They have to want to change. You know, it makes me think of this statement from this video that I watched. And it says, you can only change those who want to be changed. This person doesn't want to be changed. They like they like having you on a leash. They love it. They love it. And there's a lot of sexual energy coming in. And it's like, oh, the king of wands. What a beautiful energy. No, this is not a beautiful energy here. This is not a beautiful energy here. Like this person is in this energy because that, that's how they get you is by making you think that they've changed. This is a mask. This is a defense system put up so that you don't see the Pope energy in reverse. This is so you don't see their true colors. If they revealed their true colors, everything in their life would fall apart. And this person, like, it's interesting because here we have the, the Queen of, of Coin in the reverse on the bottom of this deck. This is like basically saying that no matter what, I'm going to have my way, even if I step on others to get there. Like, this is an ugly ass energy. This is very ugly. This is very like, and they're not going to share this with you. They're not going to share this with you. Does it say that all my readings are like this? No, because sometimes there is good energies that come through. But if you resonated with this stone... There's something that you need to know about this connection. It's not ever going to turn out the way that you want it to. You need, you need to consider yourself. Aren't you worth saving, pile two? Aren't you worth happiness? Aren't you worth having somebody show up in your court and support you and be there for you? And show you that they care and that they love and they want the best for you, not somebody who only shows up when they need something from you. This person is tricking you. And when you walk away brokenhearted, it's almost like they're like, ha ha, I pulled one over on them again. 
They might not say that to themselves, but that's the energy that they embody. Because they don't know anything better. And it comes from this. It comes from having to be the one that was always supportive in their family as a child. They don't know what love is because their parents treated them like this. Or whoever it was that was supposed to be their caretaker. They needed this child to provide them with some sort of love. And that child learned from an early age that in order to get love, I have to manipulate everybody around me. Like in order to be approved by their parents, they had to manipulate their parents to give their parents what they thought they wanted. And so this is how they bring this, this is how they bring this into life. Okay, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. But at the same time, there's nothing that you can do to change it. Like this person is balancing you. When, when you're not around, they go to someone else. When they're not around, they come to you and vice versa. Or when both of you guys are gone, they're, they're gone away at somebody else. And your angels are trying to show you how worthy you are of real love. Real love. Not this half-assed love of somebody only showing up when they want to. They're never going to give you a ring. They're never going to ask you to spend life with them. They're never going to make something official with you. Because that means that they might not get what they want. If they make it official with you, Pile 2, it might mean that it takes away this dynamic. Would it? It's hard to say. It's hard to say that if they made something official with you that this dynamic would somehow just disappear. I honestly feel like it would just be worse. Now you guys are official and they're off cheating or doing worse. I don't know what's worse than cheating, but, you know, you have a womanizer or a man-eater here. Okay? And this person was brought into your life so that you, too, could balance out this imbalance within yourself. Okay? Yes, there's a soulmate connection here. Yes. Are you star-crossed lovers? Uh, I can't say yes to that. I feel like you guys have attracted each other in many, many lifetimes. I feel like you guys have tried to learn this lesson over many lifetimes. And it's just now, again, that culmination of everything. It's so heavy. And it's like you have a choice to grow beyond this. You have a choice to change. But, you know, again, five coming out over here showing me you don't want to change. Like a refusal to change because you want it to be this person. And I, I understand that. It's scary to let go and walk out into the unknown. It is. But Source is also pointing out to me right now that you really do not think very highly of yourself, Pile 2, at all. And you chose this coin, or this coin, wow. <laughs> you chose this stone. This is about connecting with your intuition. This is telling me you don't know how to listen to your intuition right now because right now your emotions are taking you over and you're listening to your emotional ego and your emotional ego is telling you that this has to be this person because this is what you see you see this king of wands you see this really neat person this passionate person this fiery energy this very like outgoing individual but behind closed doors this person would be a terror to you if they're not already and it's like like you just you it's time for you to let this go because there is no transformation in this staying in this the transformation only comes when you let go of what has been and move on to what you need to become what do you need to become more yourself you chasing after this energy is not you being yourself that's you fighting to keep something that keeps you in a masked situation as well right and, and that's what most of our ego is doing. It's fighting so that we can it can protect us from the unknown because the unknown is what hurt us so badly when we were kids. Look at these both flipped over. Like, this is so crazy. So I'll start with these. So we have, what did I say? It's about finding out who you are and letting go of the mask. And here, wolf, authenticity comes out. Like, like this was brought into your life to help you find your authentic self. 
which I feel is so far from what this connection brings into your life. The number 17 is 8. You have abundance coming to you, but it's not with this connection. Okay, your abundance comes from yourself. Your abundance comes from within. And it's interesting because then, look, number 33, chameleon, change on the bottom. When are you going to change? It's time for you to, to find your own skin, right? Stop mirroring this person. We've got dog companionship coming out. Number 41, five, again, with change on the bottom. They're asking you to change because there's someone that's going to come into your life that is going to be loyal, honest, and supportive. But right now, the fire doesn't spark. I feel like this is somebody you may know with two uh feet what is it anyways two dogs right you have the wolf and you have dog coming out here with these two and look at their eyes are both gold like it's very intense like this very intense energy i feel like you may know this person that's meant to be in your life that's meant to be your companion but the sparks don't fly like they do with this person like there's a lot of sparks here and the reason being is because that's the only way you can ground yourself is when you're sexually involved with this person. Likewise, that's the only time that they can ground themselves is when they're sexually involved with you because the root chakra, when it's imbalanced, it wants to always be in a state of being stimulated. And that's the only way it can feel grounded. And so how can you find other ways to balance out your energy pile too so that you're not stuck in a very tricky situation? Like this is very much like, this is like the soul thief. Okay, this person's like a soul thief. And they've they've taken your soul. And you've let them. So how can you bring it back? Like, I don't know where that came from, but that was so clear right now. The soul thief. Okay, I don't know what that means to you. Uh, you know, I could definitely take a gander at it. But I think that you need to judge that for yourself. Because I think it's going to resonate with a specific few of you. Very deep. So we've got Cleopatra coming out. Wow. So crazy. I just said soul thief and I didn't even know this. Look at, she says, when you are con conquered, consider who wins. Who really wins? This person has your number. Are you winning? No, this person is winning. So the queen must lead while a wife might, might follow, but both are diplomats. Like this is asking you to be the diplomat to yourself. Be immortal, not defeated. Okay, if this is meant to be, pile two, I'm just going to tell you like they always say, let it go. Let it go and see if it comes back to you. If it returns to you in a state of balance, not in the state that it is now. If it returns to you in a state of balance, it was yours. What's yours will always come back around to you. Okay, but this person knows how to trick you into giving them what you what they want and you allow it. Like, again, with these jaguars here coming back to the intuition, allowing yourself to reconnect with your creativity, right? Allowing yourself to speak your truth because this, this connection is not your truth, okay? You have to find your truth within yourself. This is codependency. Ooh, okay, we've got Lord Byron coming through. He says, be mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Yeah, when are you going to embrace your badass self? Okay, because this situation is dangerous. This is going to this is gonna drain you for life. Love will find a way through paths where wolves fear to pray. <gasps> oh my gosh, I love when this stuff happens. Okay, let it go. Let it go and be open. Be open to what is out there because there might be something that's trying to come in pile two that's actually meant for you, right? It says friendship is love without his wings. What did I say? I feel like this person is already in your life. So we have wolf and companionship coming out both times in this card. Clarifying this is for you. This is for you. I didn't even turn these over. They all three came out at the same time. Somebody that you know is meant to be with you, but you don't connect with them like that because I, I hear it. They're boring. They're boring. Ugh, I can't be with them. You don't know. You haven't tried. 
You haven't allowed yourself to branch out from this connection because you're so set on it being this person. And I'm just going to tell you, oftentimes it's never the person we imagine it to be. Because that person comes into our lives because we've had a past life with them. And it's that remembrance of that life that's trying to be surfaced and healed that it's okay to move on from those things that we thought were once ours because maybe in that lifetime it was but this is different this is a new age that we're walking up into a higher vibrational age and that means that we can't bring low vibrational energy up with us and george clooney look a lot of masculine energy coming through guys like we have cleopatra is the only feminine coming out this is a lot of masculine energy coming in like there's a man here I don't know why, but I always feel like that's a man, just the way it is, right? These, the lot of masculine energy here. And the last reading was all feminine energy. Like, this is so crazy. He says, if you commit the perfect heist, make sure you don't brag about it. Yeah, there's like this sense of this person uses you as like, you're like the notch on their bedpost. What is it? I'm just a notch in your bedpost, but you're just a line in a song. Drop a heart, break a name. We're always sleeping in and sleeping for the wrong team. We're going down, down in an earlier round. And sugar, we're going down swinging. I'll be your number one with a bullet. A loaded God complex, cock it and pull it. That's why they wanted me to sing it. This person has a God complex and they're using that to control you. Woo, okay. Intelligence is the sexiest attribute. Not physical, not sexual, not even emotional. Are you guys intellectu intellectually connecting, right? And I mean intellectual, like having deep conversations because I know you're not. You think this person's sexy, sexy in every way because they hit you on all the right places because they're grounding you because you're disconnected from your root chakra. Once you share your personal life, it's not personal. Woo, okay, Source just came in swinging with that one, said, look, I'm going to call you out. Again, needing to create, create something. This is getting in touch with your solar plexus chakra. You're disconnected from your three bottom chakras, which is creating a disconnect from your heart chakra. And if your heart chakra is disconnected, you're not listening to your intuition. You can't. How can you? How can you? Everything is in balance. You're completely out of whack. It's okay. It's okay. Like this, I, I can absolutely resonate with this on much more levels than I care to admit. And it was a very hard lesson for myself. A very long lesson. But I'm just here to tell you, Pile 2, you're worth so much more than what this person has to offer you. But you have to believe that and you have to want to see that. You have to be able to overcome the want of this connection and really fall into what it is that you really truly want. Like have you taken time to write down on a piece of paper. The kind of relationship that you want. The kind of boundaries that you would set. Maybe that's what you need to do here. Maybe you need to sit down and write out. What kind of a connection you truly want to have. Like I want a person who cares about me. I want a person who wants to ask about my day. I want a person who sees me as I am. And is interested to get to know to me. And to get to know me on all levels. And then when you write this down, take some time and just think about this person that you're thinking about. Do they do any of that? Or are you just settling because you think that's what you're supposed to do because the connection is so intense between you two? Maybe the connection's intense because it's supposed to be hard to overcome because falling in love with ourselves, that's what's so difficult. Because... Love isn't difficult, and to love ourselves is not difficult, but learning how to fall in love with ourselves, that's difficult because we've been taught all our lives that we're not worthy of loving ourselves. We have to love everybody else and put them first, and it ends up putting us into a position of having codependent relationships. Like, this is, it may seem negative, but there's a beautiful message here for you, Pile 2. There's a beautiful message here. It's just allowing you an opportunity to be willing to look at yourself for just a minute and honestly take accountability for the actions that you put into this, this connection. And not only to put what you put into this connection, but to see what this person's bringing to this connection. And if it crosses any boundaries 
or it does not stand up to that list that you have into your in your head right and i'm talking about you you have to be honest not put paint a picture that's not there let the picture portray itself and when it does is it really what you wanted all along or is it just something that is to, to fill space because your intuition is crying out to you and i think you've known it for a long time but it's afraid to wait like your ego's afraid to wake up to your intuition because that means that your ego might have been wrong and that's what hurts so bad there's a lot of suffering in this connection you don't need to suffer anymore this is what I have for you, pile two. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Set that notification bell so you always know when the next video does go live. I'm sending out so much love to you guys. I know you can get through this. With that being said, though, go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. Becky's out of the house for now. Until we meet again, Mwah. peace out. I love y'all. Bye. And I'm moving on to pile number three. For those of you that chose this, Amethyst. Yes, it's a small piece, and you guys can see the purple up there. High chakras today. Let me get a drink of water. The last two were kind of longer than I was planning on. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Star-crossed lovers. Ooh, okay. Judgment coming out in reverse. We have some heavy hitters. So before I get into this any further, I just want to say trigger alert. Okay, these all these readings have been trigger alert, and it's interesting. I just shuffled these cards, and I have judgment in the upright on the bottom of the deck here. So yeah, I need to tell you this. This is a trigger alert. This may trigger some emotions. This may trigger some anger. So if you do find yourself being triggered, I want you to find a way to sit with this feeling and ask yourself why. Not because I'm not telling you what you want to hear. I'm telling you what you need to hear, okay? So yes, I know that this was about star-crossed lovers. Are they my star-crossed lovers? But what has been coming out has been real and raw and revealing. So I just want to prepare you before you get any further into this. If you're not ready to deal with that, if you're not ready to hear that, then come back at a later time, okay? So judgment reverse. The nine of pentacles. The King of Pentacles. Let me move these over a little bit. I'm going to put that up there. Actually, I actually have a lot more space over here. I know this, the sun is so weird right now, so just hang with me. All right. Lovers reversed. Ooh, okay. And we have the Eight of Swords. And the upright. So your deck, you guys' pile actually got five cards. I was not planning on doing five cards. And that's why all of these um, readings have been a lot longer than I was expecting them to, to be. Which is okay. It's fine. It happens. I do just want to check on one thing here. Okay. Yeah. So I did draw a card for the other piles. I'm going to draw one card for you guys. May I please have one clarifying card for pile number three? Source, may I please have one clarifying card for pile number three? Okay, that card wants to come out, so we'll take it. All right. I'm going to turn this over after we get more into this. So someone doesn't want to heal. Like This has kind of been the reoccurring theme today, guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, somebody is not wanting to heal. Like, they're being conceited with their energy. Uh, they're being conceited when they approach you. It's like they want to be single. They want to be seen a certain way. Um, you know, they... When it comes to you, like this is... And I apologize, this is the Nine of Pentacles in reverse... They're very much coming from a place of, when it comes to this connection, not only are they not wanting to heal, but this connection just uproots them from everything. We have the King of Pentacles being highlighted at the center of this reading, right? The, the only kind of positive card here, but it's giving me a really weird vibe. So... 
the King of Pentacles is very stable, right? This this King of Pentacles is very much like, I've got everything. I, I don't need anyone. I listen to what it is I want creatively. I embrace myself. I embrace my truth. I walk in these new beginnings that are always coming to me. I'm not afraid to do what ta what it needs to, but I also am aware that my past is what brought me to this now moment. Okay, and so I feel like this person approaches you in this energy, but what you're not seeing is that they, okay, yeah, I got you. So they see you as being, like, it's unfair that you have some of the things that you have, right? This person, this king is looking right here at the six, uh, the six, the lover's card in reverse, and this is always talking about promiscuity, you know, the love triangle, this is talking about third parties. This is talking about the mother wound, not wanting to heal the mother wound, always moving forward into the future, judging women or the feminine. Okay, so this could be, you could be a man watching this and your woman could be the masculine, but there's this feminine wounding here that's coming out and it's creating a lot of anxiety and a lot of blockage in this and feeling encapsulated in a situation that makes them feel too small. So every time they think about you, it's not necessarily even in a good way. Like this person really truly thinks that you are the cause of their misfortune. And I don't have any, like it's been weird. I've done love readings before and I usually do get like a masculine and feminine energy coming out. And all day today, it has been very one-sided very one-sided you know you you have the masculine the feminine and the judgment you have the masculine and the two feminines here one being the older one being the younger one you know he's looking at the older woman but he's reaching towards the younger one this is not wanting to listen about this connection i feel like you guys have been connected before okay uh you guys definitely have some history whether it's in this lifetime or another one it doesn't matter there's some history coming through, and this person really feels like they're going to be financially responsible for you no matter what at the end of the day, and they don't want to be that way. They think that's unfair. They think it's unfair that they have to take care of you in one, one way, shape, or form. There's been no positive messages today. Oh my gosh, pile three. Like, I'm really sorry that I'm the one that has to pass this on to you. It's like they don't want to face the truth. And it's not, I don't even feel like they would ever have to take care of you like that. I mean, I don't feel like you've put that on them. I don't feel like you've told them that. I don't feel like you've made them feel that way at all. But this person thinks that that's the way it's meant to be. So this person is in this role of the King of Pentacles. Whether they're a woman or a man, it doesn't matter. Like This is how they want the whole world to see them. And that that's all they care about. It's like the whole world has to see me as the king of pentacles. If they don't see me as the king of pentacles, then my whole life is going to fall upside down. And they feel like if they get connected with you in a serious relationship, they really truly feel like they're going to give you their ten of pentacles, but it's going to be in the reverse, right? And so they feel like it's unfair. Why do I have to take care of this person like this? Why do I have to materially be there for them why do i have to manifest coins and home and a family with them like this why why do i have to do that and that's because you whoever you are pile three is your very you're the feminine role and again if you're a man it doesn't matter like you have much you're much more in touch with your feminine energies okay much more in touch with your feminine energies. You could be dealing with a Virgo, heavy Virgo, heavy Gemini, also Scorpio energy coming through. Does not have to be, but that's what's showing itself here. The angels have been trying to reach this person, and it's like this person doesn't even want to look at the signs. Like, they just blatantly ignore the signs. I feel like every time the sign comes up, it makes them think about the childhood wounding that they've gone through, and that in turn makes them think about you, and that makes them, that puts them in this very odd position of being hemmed in, like closed in. There's it's an unclear path. Like, it's not that they don't care about you. I do think they care about you. 
I think they like you and they love you a lot. I think there's a lot of, of emotions when it comes to you, but there's so much emotions. They get overwhelmed and they immediately go right to their money. Well, I don't have enough money to take care of this person. I don't have enough to take care of this person. I don't have enough to do this for this person. And they're just going to take all my money anyways. And it's just going to be starting back at one. Like I'm going to have to start all over again. And the angels have been very clear with this person. You have the choice to heal, but they don't want to. They're very stable in their false illusion of stability that they've created for themselves. And I, like I said, with this king of coins, like I'm getting a very weird energy. It's actually very angry. So this person's very angry at you for no reason. And I'm not telling you this so you can go and tell this person off, okay? I'm telling you this because that's what's coming through. And I don't think that they mean to be angry at you. I think that whatever happened to them before you came along in their past life, right? Their childhood, their adolescence, their early adulthood. This person has been through it with the feminine energy. And that wound is so deep that they come from a place of just sheer disgust when it comes to feminine energy. And I don't think, like, that has no reflection on you, okay? Like, I want you to know, Pile 3, that is not a reflection on you by any means. And they don't want to offer you anything. Like, they're in this energy of, like, if I offer them something, like, I'm going to be devastated, my whole life is going to fall upside down. Like my whole world is going to come to an end. And they are just, that's why they have their coin hidden over here. And for the lovers to come out in reverse, like this is very telling. Like they'd rather just move from person to person. And not even give you any hope. Like, they don't, I don't feel like they've given you any hope, but you still love them. Like, you care about them a lot, Pile 3. Like, your energy is very kind and forgiving. And it's like, I don't care what they've done. I love them. I'll always love them. I'll always be here for them. But you're waiting for, for someone to see the errors of their way. And they're not, they don't want to heal this wound. And until they heal this wound, they're not going to see the error of what it is that they've done. Look at that. The king of pentacles clarified by the hanged man. This person is attempting to find a new perspective. I feel like they've realized that you haven't done anything personally to them to make them so angry. But that doesn't change the fact that it still comes out. It's like... Like, every time they think about you, they just immediately get defensive. They go on the, the, this downfall, this downslide, this, excuse me, I'm sorry. They go into this situation of feeling hopeless because it's like, it's not that they don't want to be with you, it's that. Just the idea of being with you reminds them of this terrible situation they've gone through. And they're not healing from that. Like, it's like, I feel like they really are trying to find a new perspective, but they feel like if they offer you anything, that you're just going to be like this situation. And you can sit here and tell me, but Becky, I'm not. I'm not like them. No, I, I know you're not. I know you're not. Like, I know you're different. My apologies. Hey. Hey, 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 it's okay. Shh. My dog wants people to know that she's here. Hold on just a second, guys. Okay, sorry, guys. Someone, somebody was coming in. So, um, yeah, they're just, I feel like they know that they can't really keep taking it out on you, but they don't know how, like, they don't know where to start. And so they're the, this conceited energy, like this is a lot of negative energy coming through for this lover's reading. Like, I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I was hoping to have some good messages today. <laughs> 
But again, I can't control the way the reading goes. I'm here to tell what's coming through, the truth, and I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. And this, this person's life is in shambles. And they, like, somehow they have made the connection that once you came into their life, it feels like their whole life has fallen apart. And I, I don't want you to take that personal at all, Pile 3. What I want you to understand is, like, you came into their life, and suddenly they saw what it was that was going on. Okay, like, it was like you mirrored to them the truth of what they were doing in their own life. And they want to blame that on you. Like, they want so badly for that to be your fault but it's not okay it's not and 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 they're learning that no matter how they spin this like it's it's good to point the finger but at the end of the day it always comes back to like i can't like i'm trying to put it on this person but at the end of the day it's not working it's not it's not happening okay and again i'm getting a deep sense like i i'm surprised the moon card didn't come out because i do get the moon card in reversed energy here like, they're very much refusing to deal with this mother wound that they have. And, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a woman who wounded them on that. It could be a, a man who's very feminine, right? We all know that we embody both energies. And some of us take on more than, than more of one than the other. And sometimes it switches. Sometimes we'll switch into a more masculine role than a feminine role or a more feminine role than a masculine role. Okay, whatever it is. But there's this deep energy of them repressing this hurt. And then every time it gets triggered, they're trying to blame somebody else for the situation that they're in. And and does this mean that you're supposed to be with them? I think this is a lesson for you. I think this is a lesson for you to honor that. I'm really trying to figure out how to word this for you. I know what it is. It's just I'm trying to word it in a way that doesn't make it seem like, oh, well, this is this whole situation has been pointless. Like, why the hell did I even try? It's like, no, like, because I, I really get like you feel hopeless now. Like I like for those of you that have stuck it out with me now, you feel like it's just been all for naught. And that's a that's the last thing source wants you to think. It's like source is just trying to tell you, like, this is something you agreed to before you were born. This is something you agreed to so that you yourself could set some sort of boundary for yourself. More importantly, this is so you could see your worth. Not a false sense of worth. Okay? This is so that you could look at this from a higher perspective yourself and see this person with love and let them go with love. Right. Oftentimes we have to let them go and see if they really are for us and we'll find that maybe they were, maybe they weren't. OK, but if you're not if you're not willing, if you're so obsessed with having this person in your life and you're not willing to work on yourself and it's more about having this person in your life, then just know that this this energy won't ever balance itself out because it's not that this person doesn't care about you. They do. But you're there. You're there. And they don't want to change because they feel like they deserve you. And they feel like that's it. Like they don't have to do anything. It's just like you'll just be waiting for them until they ever decide to change what it is that they've gone through. And that's not fair to you, Pile 3. That's what Source is trying to point out. Like there's a sense of, of real, un, like there's an unfair situation here. And it's like Source is trying to bring something more fair into your life. We've got Wolverine flipping over. I want to get one more animal oracle for you guys. They please have one more animal oracle for pile number three source. Yeah, they want this one. Look at that. Okay. So we have four and five. This is the 31 card. Cycles and hair. And then we have fierceness. Wolverine coming out. So, and number five. And look, on the bottom, release. Jaguar. Yeah, so you have to come into an energy of releasing this situation so that it can stop recycling, okay? Cycles are recycled from situations we're not willing to heal from or we don't see the pattern in them, right? And I think a lot of times it's not that people don't want to heal from them. And there are instances where people don't want to heal from them. But I think there's a lot of situations where we just don't see it. And so how can we heal something that we don't see, Right. And so this is a cycle for you. And also this is a cycle for them. 
And so this is telling you, you need to come into connection with the cycle for yourself and be willing to change to find four is about stability and protection. You are protected. Okay, you are protected. You will get what you ask for, even if it's not this. You will get what you ask for. You have to have faith in that. And to be fierce in your energy and protecting your energy, right? Like five is all about change. Are you willing to change what it is that you've been doing so you can bring yourself into a state of balance, so that you can bring yourself into a place of wholeness? Because right now, I don't feel like you feel very whole. I don't feel like you feel very good at all. And it's like, I get this sense, if only I could be in this connection, I would feel better. And that's what Source wants you to walk away from. You're already good enough as you are. This person is not going to bring to you any kind of validation that you don't already have the ability to give yourself. And so that's the thing. It's like being fierce with protecting your energy and knowing that you have an army of angels and guides behind you helping you through this journey. Even though it's like we're so stuck on wanting love. Like that's, and I say this a lot, and if it's rep repetitive, I apologize, but I just want people to understand I love love, okay? I love love, but what most of us think is love, it's not. We think it's love because we've been taught this way. And so we're struggling through codependent relationships thinking that this is what we're supposed to have. Like this is what Source brought to us for love. And not everybody does. Not everybody does, but a lot of us have to learn some really hard lessons when it comes to love because we're learning from parents who didn't love each other because there's a lot of shotgun weddings. You know, if you're from my generation, you heard of a lot of shotgun weddings, people who got married just because somebody got pregnant. They weren't meant to be together, but they got married and they tried to make it work anyways. And then as soon as the kids turned 18, they broke up. I can't tell you how many of my friends that happened to. It happened to even my people in my family. People in my family went through that. Okay, so this is like learning your own cycles. That's why I'm saying like you have to learn and you have to be willing to release because when you release, you're going to embrace us. A, 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 this is hard. This is really hard for you to take in. And I, I just want you to know that you are supported. When you release this, you will allow a piece of your soul to shine that has been captivated and clouded by this cycle. So we have Serge Gainsbourg. He says, beauty is the promise of happiness and a guarantee of despair. Wow. Happiness is cultivated from within. No one can promise you anything. No one. Not even this person can bring a promise to you. When I leave you, or when I leave, you shall have no kisses left. To love, you must ignore the difference between pleasure and pain. Like this is so profound right now because it's like he's saying that all of this energy that you're dealing with, it's like you promised yourself, I'll only be happy when I have this man or this woman, right? And it's like this person is in this energy of like, I'm mad at you and so, and I deserve you, but knowing that I don't have to give myself to you, it's almost empowering them. And that's it. To love, you must ignore the difference between pleasure and pain. This is a painful situation for you. And you don't know how to be pleasurable to yourself or with yourself. Right? And I'm not, yes, you could masturbate and that you could take that as masturbating. But this is more along the lines of learning how to be that boyfriend or girlfriend that you've always wanted in your life. That's what pleasure is, is learning to love yourself that deeply. Bianca Del Rio. Oh, this card is so intense. A unicorn is a horse with extra potential. This is you. You're the unicorn. Not this person. You. You're the unicorn. True love is clearly illegal in most states. And what did I say? Most of us don't even know what real love is. And that's what it's saying. It's clearly illegal because everybody marries for convenience. Not because they love somebody, but because of convenience. Everyone needs that special someone who can stroke your hair while you cough with your head in the toilet. Bianca's here telling you it's okay for you to let this go for a while because there's something you need to learn here. You need to learn that you're the unicorn. You're the one that is unique and beautiful and wonderful and pile through. You deserve to have happiness and your happiness isn't going to come from this person. It's going to come from you and then Marilyn Monroe. Oh, Marilyn Monroe. She's like already just like 
in the third party situation, right? This beautiful woman who didn't believe in herself. Like, I just ha I feel like I have to tell you this. Like, she didn't believe that she was as beautiful as everybody was saying she was. But even if you look at her now, she's such an icon. She's an icon for everybody. But if you've ever heard of her story and how she struggled with self-image. And what did I say? I feel like you don't feel very good about yourself. Like, like this makes you feel bad. This situation breaks your heart. It makes you feel bad. And this person... All they think of is that you're their devastation. And that makes you feel bad. Like, I feel like you've already known this. Right? I feel like you've already known this. And and we've got a lot of purple coming out in these three cards here. I'll show you this in just a second. But I just want to bring this up. The crown chakra. Right? We had two crown chakra stones come or gemstones coming through. And this is telling me, like, you need to reconnect with your higher self with source. Right? Allow yourself to embrace the beauty that's within you. I hear right now, diamond in the rough. Like, it's coming through so strongly. Like, you're the diamond in the rough, pile three, and you don't see that. You're so concerned about this connection, and you don't see your beauty. And that, it's sad. It's sad. So I feel like that's why Marilyn Monroe came out. She says, orgasms don't exist. It's better to send your spend your time reading Ulysses. Enjoy your wedding day. You only get to do that three or four times in your life. Never pick stability over a good time. So again, bringing out that you need to learn how to have fun, right? Maybe your fun is what other people don't see as fun. But if you find it fun, go and do that. This relationship is not worth it because there's a lot more to you that has to be found. And that enjoy your wedding day. You only get to do that three or four times. This person has multiple people in their life. Okay. And I, whether they're approaching you, I just don't get the sense that they've approached you. Like I feel like they don't approach you, but they approach everyone else and they just leave you hanging on the sidelines. Like that's the real energy that's coming through. Like you're the energy for this particular one out of all of them. They've all been heavy, but your guys' has been the heaviest. Like this is just... A lot of people right now stuck in this energy of, all oh, my soulmate, my twin flame, my this, that. Well, that's the twin flame dynamic. Somebody has to hurt another one and this, that, and the other. And I honestly have this. So this could be controversial, and I might actually make a video on this. But most people are so stuck on the fact that the twin flame dynamic is like a narcissist. So does that mean that your twin flame is a narcissist no matter what? And then what about the people who are in union with them? Like you hear these people who are in union and how easily they got into union and how we're all struggling to get into union, right? Like maybe we are on the twin flame journey and maybe we're not. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and beg source to tell me if I'm a twin flame I want Source to show me at the end of the day what real unconditional love is. Because if we are on the Twin Flame journey, the goal of the Twin Flame journey is to come into a space of unconditional love for ourself. I want that to sink in for you, Pile 3. It's not about another being. It's not about what another person can bring into your life. It's about learning how to see yourself from the eyes of God, from the eyes of source, from the eyes of the universe, from the eyes of our creator. Can you look yourself in the eye in the mirror right now and see yourself in a place of complete unconditional love, accepting all your flaws, all your mistakes, all the things that you've done, all the flabby parts on your body, the wrinkly parts on your body, all the pieces that don't look... If, perfect the way that you think they should can you hold that part of your body and say i love you with my whole heart and soul the energy that i'm getting right now is that i don't feel like you can and that's why source wanted me to do this reading this was about bringing you guys back to yourself no matter how hard that is, no matter how heavy that is, this is about learning how to bring yourself back to you.
My heart is broken. My heart is broken reading this. I feel like you have just been so patient in everything that you've done for this person. I feel like you have shown this person time and time again that you love them. Even though there's no Cubs cards on here. When I'm connecting with your energy personally, Pile 3... You guys are a group of individuals that care deeply about others. But when it comes to caring about yourself like that, that's not easy. That's not easy. It's like I'd rather help everybody else out because that means I don't have to look into my own life. And I've been there, done that pile three. It's a hard lesson. And it leaves you broken and wounded. And it leaves you in a state of wondering, is there anybody out there that actually understands what it is that I've done for others? There are. There are. So many of us have had to learn how to come back to ourselves that it's about learning self-love. And that's why I say, like, I, Twin Flame Label has kind of become the next sliced bread. And there are so many people out there that are using it to gain a following and to gain money and to gain people's, like, to, to, to fool people over. Okay, at the end of the day, you can't really say whether or not these, these, these people are trustworthy or not. You can only go based on if you agree with them, if you resonate with them and everything. And at the, if you're not listening to the depths of your intuition, is that true? Because the more that I grew, the more I realized how fake so many of these people were that I was watching in regards to Twin Flames. Until one day I heard, whispered in my ear, whispered so, it was, it was so loud, it made me jump up from my seat. It's time to let go. And I sat there and I was all by myself in this RV. And I was looking around and I was like, who the hell just said that to me? And... I realized it was because I was waiting. I was waiting for this person to get back to me. I was waiting for this person to see me. All the lo long while I was waiting, I never saw me. I never saw who I was. Okay, and I know this is a tarot reading and to have story time, but I just feel like I need to tell you this because I feel like you need to understand that you're not the only one that's been in this situation at all. You're not. You're not the only one that's gone through this. You're not the only one that's dealt with this. And you're not the only one that's been left waiting. And I'm here to tell you, Pile 3, that you deserve so much more than being somebody's wait post. That's not fair. That's not fair that you're the one that's stuck waiting while they're out having their good old time doing whatever it is that they want to have. Right? That's just not... It's not fair to you. You want to build stability. You want to build something solid. And this person can't commit. There's a lot of weird energies coming through today. And out of all of them, doing yours has made me the most exhausted. Because I feel like that... It has been a battle for you guys. Like, you care about this person a lot. And even to mention having to necessarily let go. It's like almost... I just feel this immediate, like, resistance of heart. This immediate, like, I can't, I, I, I don't know if I can. And that's what Source wants you to work on. Why? Why are you so afraid of being abandoned? You're not abandoned. You never have been abandoned. Even if you've been abandoned in this 3D world, you've always had your guardian angels with you. You've always had your guides. You've always had Source. I know these are not things we see. But if you've been on the spiritual journey for any amount of time, you are perfectly well and you understand that these are things that we feel. I love you, Pile 3. And I'm sending you out an energetic hug right now. Like, if you can't see me hugging myself, let me lift the camera out. All right? I, I actually want to get serious for, for a second with you guys. I'm sending you an energetic hug. Because you guys need it. And you need to know that you're loved. And you need to know that you are worthy. And you need to know that you're beautiful people. This is, this is, this is intense. I stray away from love readings for this particular reason. 
because oftentimes they don't turn out the way people want them to. But I cannot tell you how many times people have come back and told me that I've been spot on. I don't want to tell you what you want to hear. And I never will. I want to tell you the truth. And if the truth feels ugly, I'd rather be presented as an ugly individual who's had some validity than somebody who said exactly what you wanted to hear and then your heart gets broken anyways. Because that doesn't make us feel good. Especially when we're expecting something much higher than what's really there. I love you guys. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, set that notification bell down below. And as always, go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. Until we meet again, peace out. I love y'all. Bye.